Hi students, welcome to lesson 17, Probability Sampling. Introduction. The method of selecting a sample for the study is of fundamental importance and it depends upon the nature of data and investigation. The sampling design can be broadly classified into two types, probability sampling and non-probability sampling. Probability sampling is the sampling procedure in which each and every individual or unit of population has equal chances of being selected for the sample. This method offers a high degree of representativeness. However, this sampling method is expensive, time consuming and also little bit complicated as it requires a large sample size and the unit selected for the study may be widely scattered. Whereas in the non-probability sampling design, the units may not have equal chances of being selected and this method does not claim for representativeness. Objectives. After reading this lesson, you will be able to define probability sampling, explain different types of probability sampling, explain the advantages and disadvantages of probability sampling. Now let us define probability sampling. In social sciences and business research, probability sampling method has been the primary method for selecting the sample from a large population. Probability sampling is based on random selection of units from a population. It provides a scientific technique for picking the sample or units from the given population in which each unit has definite pre-assigned probability of being selected. In other words, probability sampling method refers to sampling in which each unit of the population has an equal or known chances of being selected for the study. The sampling process is carried out in such a way that probability of every unit in the population has the equal chance of being selected for the sample and not based on the discretion of the researcher. For example, you must have come across offers or schemes launched by some business firms like a cloth store has advertised that the customers who purchase the clothes of worth rupees 2000 are eligible to participate in lottery or lucky drip drop. In this case, each and every customer who purchase clothes of worth rupees 2000 have equal chances of being selected and have equal chances of being awarded with the prize. According to Black and Champion, the probability sampling has to satisfy certain conditions. Let us discuss them. The first one is the researcher needs to have a complete list of subjects or people to be studied that must be available. The second one is size of the universe must be known. Third one is desired sample size must be specified and each element must have an equal chances of being selected. Types of probability sampling. Probability sampling is divided into six types. They are simple random sampling, stratified random sampling, systematic sampling, cluster sampling, multi-stage sampling and multi-phase sampling. Now let us discuss about simple random sampling. In this sampling, each unit has an equal chance of being selected. The process of selection of a unit is random, but in practice, the random sample usually is a representative sample and gives reasonably accurate data. It is also called equal probability sampling or proportionate sampling because each element in the population has an equal probability of getting into the sample and all choices are independent of one another. It gives each possible sample combinations an equal probability of being chosen. This method is considered as the best for selecting a representative sample which requires only minimum knowledge of the universe well in advance. 
the sample units for the research study can be selected by various methods like lottery method, picking blindfolded, tippets tables, computers, personal identification number or by first letter and so on. Santosh Gupta has mentioned four methods by which the researcher can draw the sample on random basis. They are lottery method, use of tables of random numbers, selecting from sequential list and grid system. Now let us discuss about lottery method. In this method, the various units of the universe or population are numbered on a small slip of paper and mixed and uh, kept in the drum. A blindfolded selection is then made of the number of slips required to constitute the desired sample size. This method involves three steps. The first step involves constructing the sampling frame like a list of units of population. For example, strengths list, list of electoral roll in alphabetical order and number accordingly. The second step is writing numbers listed in the sampling frame on a small piece of paper and placing these papers in some vessel or container and so on. And the third step involves in mixing all the papers well and picking one paper from the vessel or container and so on. This process is continued until the researcher has the required number of samples. For example, the researcher wants to collect the opinion of students from Telangana state on MOOCs courses being offered on Swayam platform. The researcher then takes the list of all the students who enrolled in various courses being offered by Swayam program. Say for example, 5000 students have been enrolled in MOOCs course and the researcher wish to collect the opinion from 500 students. The roll number of the students or the names of the students are written on 5000 pieces of papers and are placed in the drum and mixed thoroughly. An eminent person or a child is invited to pick 500 slips from the drum. The strengths with roll numbers or the names on the slips is identified and their opinions will be recorded. Thus, fine red units will be selected and the data is collected from the respondents or strengths. The next one is tippets table or use of tables of random numbers. This method is most practical and economical of selecting numbers of units randomly. Tippet gave 10,400 four-figure numbers. He selected 41,600 digits from the census reports and combined them into fours to give his random numbers, which may be used to obtain a random sample. We can illustrate the procedure by an example. First of all, we produce the first 30 sets of tip tippets numbers, 5,356, 2,952, 6,641, 3,992, 6,008, 7,979, 7,691, 3,170, 5,624, 560, 9,025, 1,545, 7,203, 5,911, 1,300, 2,693, 2,370, 7,483, 3408 and so on. So we have seen that he has mentioned about 30 numbers. Suppose the researcher is interested in taking a sample of 10 units from a population of 5000 units, bearing numbers from 2500 to 6500. He shall select 10 such figures from the above random numbers which are not less than 2501 and not greater than 6500. If we randomly decide to read the table numbers from left to right starting from the first row itself, we obtain the following numbers like 5356, 2952, 3992, 6008, 3170, 5624, 5911, 2693, 3408 and 2769. The units bearing the above serial numbers would then constitute the required random sample. 
the probability of each unit or number being selected in the simple random sampling method can be calculated by using the formula sample size is divided by total units or population. The electronic media want to know the perception of students on online teaching. For example, the total students pursuing Bachelor of Arts course from Usmania University are 50,000 and the media wants to interview 5,000 students. The simple random sampling will be selected as follows. Sampled strengths by total strengths which is nothing but 5000 divided by 50000 strengths which is 1 by 10 that is equal to 0 0.1. We can define a simple random sample or simply a random sample from a finite population as a sample which is chosen in such a way that n c n n is equal to total population where c is the combination where small n is the sample size. So, n c n possible samples has the same probability of 1 by n c n of being selected. To make it more clear, we take a certain finite population consisting of 6 elements. For example, a, b, c, d, e, f. So, uh, the capital N is nothing but the total variables is equal to 6. Suppose, we want to take a sample of size n is equal to 3 from it then there are 6 C3 combinations which is equal to 20 possible distinct samples of the required size and they consist of the elements ABC, ABD, ABE, ABF, ACD, ACE, ACF, ADE, ADF, AEF, BCD, BCE and so on. If we choose one of these samples in such a way that each has the probability of 1 by 20 of being chosen because we have 20 combinations that means each combination has equal chances that means 1 is to 20 of being chosen. We then call this a random sample. Selecting from the sequential list. In this method the names of the units or population are first arranged alphabetically or in serial order. Then from the list every tenth or any other number may be selected for the research. The fourth one is grid system. This method is used for selecting area for the research study. First the entire area is prepared and is squared. The area which falls in the square is selected for the research purpose. The advantages of simple random sampling. The first one is each unit has equal chances of being selected. It is easy to conduct. It is simple compared with other sampling methods. Researcher does not need to know the true composition of population well in advance. At the same time, this also has its own disadvantages. The first one is greater chances of having errors in the result. It cannot be employed when the researcher wants to categorize people into various subgroups. The next one is stratified random sampling. In social science research, the researcher in the course of his study may find population which is heterogeneous in nature. In order to obtain more efficient and accurate results, the researcher may use stratified random sampling. In the stratified random sampling method, the population is divided into a number of strata or subgroups and a sample is drawn from each subgroup, each of which is homogeneous with respect to one or more characteristics. For example, gender, age, class, educational level, residential background, family type, religion, occupation and so on. Now let us discuss the steps involved in stratified random sampling. The first one is deciding relevant stratification criteria such as sex, age, class, religion and so on. Then dividing the population into subgroups or strata. The third step is listing the units separately in each subgroup or strata. And the fourth step involves in selecting the required sample from each subgroup or strata by using an appropriate 
random selection technique. The fifth step is to consolidate the sub samples for making the main sample. Stratified random sample is very useful when the list or the details of the individuals in the population is available. For example, while selecting a sample of graduate students pursuing education through Swayam portal, the researcher may divide the whole population based on sex like male strengths and female strengths of those drawn from north, south, east and west regions of the country. Or we can divide the strengths based on the courses opted or we can divide them based on the place of residence like rural or urban area and so on. All these will be sub samples or strata. From each subgroup, the researcher may select same sample required for the study. There are two types of stratified random sampling. They are proportionate stratified random sampling and disproportionate stratified random sampling. Now let us discuss about proportionate stratified random sampling. In this sampling method, the sample unit is in proportionate to the size of the sampling unit. To understand this sampling method, we will consider an example or we will take an example. Let us consider the students pursuing sociology from SWAM courses. The researcher wishes to have proportionate stratified random sample of them taking year of study as the basis of stratification. Suppose the students are in SWAM program or courses has been shown in the table. The strengths enrolled in BA first year are 15, in BA second year there are 40 strengths and the strengths enrolled in BA final year are 40 and the strengths who are enrolled in MA first year is 40 and MA final year is 30. So the total strength of sociology strengths is 200. In this, to get the proportion of each class, divide the strength strength or population of each class by the total strength strength. For example, divide 50 with 200. 50 is the strength in BA first year and the total strength of the strengths pursuing sociology both at UG and PG level is 200. So we are going to divide 50 by 200. So we get the proportion of each class. Further, the researcher wishes or decides to have a sample of 50 strengths. First, he determines the proportion of strengths in each class. Then he calculates the composition of the sample taking each proportion of stratifying characteristics in the population and multiplying it by the desired size of the sample. Thus he multiplies 50, the desired sample size by 0.25. The proportion of BA first year strengths in the population is 55 into 0.25 which is equal to 14. So the researcher is going to select 14 strengths from BA first year. Then he is going to select 11 strengths from BA second year, 11 strengths from BA final year, 11 strengths from MA first year and 8 strengths from MA final year. After determining the sample size from each strata or category, the researcher uses simple random sampling for collecting the information from the desired number of elements from each substrata or category. Now let us discuss disproportionate stratified random sampling. In the disproportionate stratified random sampling, the sample unit is not related to the units of the target population. For example, the researcher wants to a sample size of 60 from 2000 population of different religious groups. For example, there are four religious groups. The researcher can divide the desired sample by four religions, 60 divided by four, that is equal to 15. Therefore, in each substrata is 15. The researcher is going to collect the data from 15 respondents. The researcher can use simple random sampling for collecting the information from the desired number of elements from each substrata. Now let us discuss the advantages of stratified random sampling. The samples chosen can represent various groups. It can be used for comparing groups or subgroups. It is more precise than simple random sampling. 
stratified random sampling has its own disadvantages. The first one is this method is little bit complex. It takes time to stratify the elements into different strata. And the chances of errors increase with the increased stratification or classification. The next one is cluster sampling. This sampling involves dividing the population into clusters and drawing a random sample either from all clusters or selected clusters. This method is employed when the research area or universe is widespread and involves huge expenses. In cluster sampling, first the whole research area is divided into sub areas commonly known as clusters. Simple random sampling is used to select the clusters and finally the researcher arrives at ultimate sample size which is used for the study. For example, the researcher would like to know the problems faced by doctors during the pandemic time in the state. It will not be possible to gather the information from all the doctors who are scattered across the state. In this case, the researcher will prepare the list of all the hospitals in all the districts and group them into clusters. Then he selects the cities or towns from the clusters using simple random sampling. Then the researcher may select all the doctors or few doctors to study the problems being faced by them during this pandemic period. Now let us discuss the advantages of cluster sampling. The first one is it is easy to apply when large population needs to be studied. The second one is uh, the expenditure is low compared with other sampling methods. The third one is if the respondents are not available they can be easily replaced with the other people. It is flexible, easy to administer as there is no need to identify the uh, individuals. Now let us discuss the disadvantages of cluster sampling. Each cluster selected for the study may not be of same size. The second one is individuals can be the members of two clusters hence the individual may be studied twice. The groups may not have the same features or characteristics and the sampling error is greater. The next one is systematic sampling. Systematic sampling is a probability technique in which every nth item say every fifth or tenth item is selected in the list representing the universe. The number of n is called sampling interval. In this method generally the first unit is randomly selected and the remaining units are selected automatically in a predetermined manner. For example, in a village there are 500 households and the researcher wants to gather the information from 100 individuals. Then the researcher makes a list of all the households that is 500 and divides it with the desired sample size which is 100. It means that every fifth number is selected for the study. The first household is selected randomly and thereby selecting the next household with an interval of 5 between each. If the researcher has selected fifth household, the following households will be 10, 15, 20, 25 and so on till we get the required sample size. This type of sample is also known as sampling by regular intervals or sampling by fixed intervals. Now let us discuss the advantages of systematic sampling. It is simple and easy to use. It is rapid as it eliminates various steps. Mistakes committed while drawing the sample is unimportant. Now let us discuss about the disadvantages of systematic sampling. It ignores all the persons between uh, two n numbers. Each unit or individual do not have equal chances of being selected for the study. The next one is multi-stage sampling. In the multi-stage sampling method, sampling is selected at various stages or levels, but only the last sample of subjects will be studied. For example, the researcher wishes to know the effectiveness of Skill India program. He can divide the entire country into four zones northern zone, southern zone, eastern and western zone. One state is selected from each zone 
one district is selected from each state one block is selected from each district and three villages are selected from each block this helps us in studying and understanding the implementation of skill india program in the country the next one is multi phase sampling in this sampling method the required information is collected from a large sample of units this process is just like the multi stage sampling in the multi phase sampling each sample is adequately studied before another sample is drawn from it this method helps the researcher to choose more relevant and more representative sample after gathering the information at each phase for example the researcher is interested to the to know the opinion of the students pursuing msw course say there are five colleges which are offering msw course in hyderabad city with an intake of 30 students each the sampling frame will be constructed with the students of five colleges in the next phase the students will be studied with regard to their academic background like arts social sciences medicine and so on in the next phase 50 students will be selected from the total students from uh, for our study of which 25 girls and 25 boys will be selected this constitute the final sample for the study now let us discuss the advantages of probability sampling the first one is it is cost effective using probability sampling it is easy to select the required sample randomly from the given population once sample is selected the process is half done this process saves cost and time to a great extent we can take any number of samples from this process the next one is it involves less degree of judgment while assigning the number to an item of the population the person assigns it in a random trend that makes the process of probability sampling more effective and more accurate there will be no bias in selecting the sample from the population the third one is comparatively easier way of sampling probability sampling does not involve any complex and long process thus this is an easier way for sampling less time consuming this process is simple and short and saves lot of time which can be used for data analysis and interpretation it can be done even by non technical persons the assignment of random number can be done by any kind of person after a short briefing as this does not involve any lengthy complex and crucial process sample representative of population probability sampling uses random numbers which ensure that the samples vary as much as the population itself now let us discuss the disadvantages of probability sampling the first one is lack of sufficient information about the population this method requires complete list of universe or population if the data is not available usage of this method will be restricted the second one is it is highly complex process in probability sampling the data of the population should be gathered arranged and units have to be selected randomly which is a complex process the third one is it is time consuming after selecting the units from the population who are scattered in a large area finding and gathering the information consumes lot of time it is expensive as the units are scattered in large area gathering the information from them is little bit expensive the chances of selecting specific class of samples only if the researcher has to gather the household related information they may develop a trend of either approaching the elderly or the youngest in the family in this case only the oldest or the eldest uh, generation will be taken as samples now let us sum up from this lesson we have learned that whenever 
the researcher has the complete information of the population. Probability sampling can be employed. Using probability sampling, sampling errors, researcher bias in selecting the sample units can be minimized. It further makes the task for the researcher easy in selecting the sampling units.